And here we are again. Welcome, if you will, to Perspectives. It's good to have you with us. We have some interesting folks lined up today, not the least of which is our first guest, and it's Brian Lee Wiesenhunt. Wiesenhunt, yes. I got it, yes! <laughs> All right, the executive director of the Gilcrease Museum, and new, rather new, aren't you? Yes, I started in April, so it's just been a few months. Came to us by way of Corning, New York? Yes, before I came to Gilcrease, I was at the Rockwell Museum in Corning, New York, which is a Smithsonian affiliate and has very strong American collection in the same way that Gilcrease does, but not quite as large. You know, we have a lot of uh, American Indian artists who have made the big time, and I'm sure you know the background of most of them. Many. That we have in the, uh, in the Gilcrease. It goes without saying that we are really proud of the Gilcrease in this part of the country. Have you had a chance to acclimate yourself to everything that's over there? Well, right now it's been a little challenging because of the construction project. So much of the collection is in storage. So I'm kind of limited in exploring the collection through our digital collections online, which is something that's available to anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Gilcrease collection is immense, over 350,000 objects. Oh, I know. It's just huge. And we have about 10% of that available online, including paintings, historic documents from the archives, photography, sculpture, Native American art. And there's a lot of different ways you can explore searching on your own if there's an artist that you're interested in. Or they've also created some albums, um, some groups where you can look at women artists from the collection. Uh, so it's a really great way to get to know Gilcrease Collection. That's kind of what I'm doing right now since we're mostly in storage. But I grew up going to Gilcrease uh, as a resident of Tulsa, so it's one of my childhood museums. So I know the collection uh, mostly from you know hindsight, from uh, my mind's eye growing up here in Tulsa. Don't you have an Allen Hauser sculpture out front? We do, the Sacred Rain Arrow, which uh, historically was at the entrance of Gilcrease in our previous building. And it'll be returned to that position, although the building's uh, situ situated a little differently. It's a little further back than the previous structure. Uh, it will still greet visitors as they come to the Gilcrease mm -hmm. and enter the museum when we open in 2026. You know, there was a, a bit of a scandal that uh, broke about uh, eight years ago, and I recall it had to do with Russell's and Remington's because okay. there were fakes mm. out there of bronzes. Mm -hmm. And somebody caught it because of the, the feet of, of the riders. Uh, one, one of them, I think, had their feet, one foot was backwards. Mm. <laughs> and when that story broke, boy, everybody Tell went to the Gilcrease to, well, let's see them. You know? <laughs> so I, I remember that well. What's the biggest challenge facing you right now? Well, right now we're really focused on the opening of the museum, which is a couple of years away. And so there's really the sequence of events and activities. So early next year, the building will be complete and we'll gain access to it. And then we begin the task of moving that collection of over 350,000 objects back into the building, into collection storage. Once that is done, then we'll begin to install the galleries and permanent exhibitions, mm -hmm. which are really a little different than what visitors saw before when they came to Gilcrease, and get ready for opening events probably mid-year in 2026 with some soft openings and donor events and then open to the public later that year. There are a lot of folks that don't realize that uh, things have been shut down with this rebuilding center, or rebuilding period. Yes. We've been dark as far as the building, but we still maintain a lot of activity in the community. We have Gilcrease in Your Neighborhood, which is a program we've been doing for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we just installed the latest iteration of that. It's in five parks around the city of Tulsa. And it's a photograph from our Eddie Faye Gates collection, which is the historic photographs and other um, elements that were collected by Eddie Faye Gates by survivors of the Tulsa Race Massacre. It's a really beautiful photograph of one of her relatives seated in really? a landscape by a body of water. And we don't know a lot about the site, but we know a little bit about her cousin. Um, and so it's a really great way to explore the Gilcrease collection if you're out at the park. There's a family guide you can pick up and other activities that you can do. So even though we've been dark for a couple of years, we've done a lot and we are doing a lot. We've got family workshops this fall, a special screening of a film at Circle Cinema in a couple of weeks. Uh, so we really tried to maintain engagement and activity with the community, even though you can't visit the museum except virtually. Well, put us on your mailing list, man, because I got to tell you, there is so much to it. And you guys have done so much, unlike some museums who just say, here, I see it, come on. <laughs> you guys have made an effort to take the art to the people. We have tried. 
And it's worked. Good. Good. Glad it's to hear worked. that. I have a daughter who is working in New York right now and said that she came across some pieces, I think, uh, I won't even try to remember the name of the museum, which one it is, <clears throat> but she said, Dad, uh, Dad, I can almost swear I saw this at the Gilcrease. Probably. It's an amazing collection that represents 12,000 12, years of history of the Americas. I think a lot of people think of the Gilcrease collection as being a Western collection, and that's very much one of the elements, but there's so much more to it as far as in the archives, uh, in the Native American collection, and the archeological collection. Uh, there's so much that connects the stories of the Americas across mm -hmm. North and South America, beyond the divisions that we understand and have been established in our current time period. One of, one of the, uh, the crown jewels of, of the museum has always been its allure. Mm. Uh, I know for a fact that uh, over the years there have been a number of celebrities, if you will, who very quietly mm -hmm. came, saw, conquered, and left, and then ended up donating something to the museum. So it's grown richly. It has. Do you buy or do you trade? How do you get these wonderful pieces? Well, I think one of the um, challenges with the Gilcrease collection is its size. It's something that you know we we are tr we are struggle with as far as uh, the care for it, uh, the housing of it, and that was one of the inspirations for this new building, so that we have a facility that takes care of this collection as it deserves to be. Um, and so, with a collection of this um, scale, of this nature, of this status, we have to be very mindful and considerate of what we add to it. Um, so, we have made a few acquisitions over the last couple of years, thinking about reopening looking at some contemporary Native American artists and some mm -hmm. of the ideas and elements that they're uh, dealing with in their practice and, and the work that they produce and how they connect um, across time to the history of Native American people in North America. Um, so those are some of the kind of very judicious um, uh, selections we've made. As we move forward, we're going to be working on a collection development plan, and that will really look at the strengths of the collection, mm -hmm. um, what needs to be added, what stories, what perspectives are not present that could be added to the Gilcrease collection that would broaden what we're able to do, how we're able to connect with our communities and our visitors, and really show uh, the breadth of perspectives that make up the American experience, the American story, as is represented at the museum. We're quickly running out of time, and I'm so sorry to have to tell you that, but i got to ask you quickly. Sure. How has the program worked where you've gone into the schools with works of art for the kids to see very young? We've continued to do that. We are part of the um, Any Given Child program that's done in Tulsa Public Schools, and we also do considerable other outreach programs in the communities. Um, so it's something we'll continue to do, and we really are looking to the public schools and the teachers, the educators, and the parents to help us determine how we can best serve and support their needs. We want to be very responsive, especially for educators, for young learners, uh, to the needs that they have and how we can really um, add to what's available to them in the classroom and in the schools and, and bring additional resources, education, and experiences. You to know, them. I know every classroom has a class clown. <laughs> but it's an amazing thing to me that over the years when I've gone to the Gilcrease mm -hmm. and there have been tours of young children, how they get quiet. Because they know they're in a special place. It is a special place and it is a special experience. And as someone who grew up going to Gilcrease on tours and with my family, it's very important to me that that continues. It's very important to me that those experiences continue to evolve and meet the expectations of audiences today. We can't do the same things that we were doing when I was a kid. We have to meet people where they are currently through technology, through experiences, through educations that support their learning and the development. One more quickie. You, you have referred to Tulsa as a place you used to live. Yes. How long ago? I left Tulsa about 30 years ago, so I'm a fourth generation Okie. My grandparents moved to Tulsa during World War II to build planes for the war effort for J. Paul Getty. Uh, so my father grew up here and I grew up here. Um, my family's mostly in Pontotoc County in the Ada area, but Oklahoma is very near and dear to my heart. And uh, it was hard to leave and I'm glad they asked me back. <laughs> well, welcome home, buddy. <laughs> Brian, thank you. And don't forget, You're welcome. keep us on your mailing list. Absolutely. You're a good man. I don't care what anybody says. We're going to break now, take a short break. We'll be back with more right after this. <laughs>